Hi, I'm Mark Heim, founder of Disaster Doc. I help people all over the world to better understand disasters so they can protect themselves and others. Today I'd like to talk to you about disaster planning, and I hope to give you an overview of the basics. Let's talk about the best practices for disaster planning. I'd like to share with you one of the newest best practices, an automated disaster evaluation and planning system called ADEPT. What is ADEPT? In simplest terms, it's a planning system. ADEPT has seven main functions, plan writing, plan storage, plan search and query, plan sharing, plan execution, plan monitoring and evaluation. Now let's take a closer look at those three components of the ADEPT planning system, the method, the format, and the platform. One of our first challenges for standardizing disaster planning is to standardize the practice and methodology that we use. ADEPT uses a standardized approach that guides the practice of planning. And this helps to ensure the accuracy, the validity, and the reproducibility of the plan. ADEPT also uses a standardized methodology so that planning experiences may be compared among different groups of stakeholders. ADEPT uses the AC3T, or the ACT planning wheel, as we like to call it. It has five phases, assess, plan, check, prepare, and test. And you probably recognize that ACT planning wheel. It's based upon Deming's PDCA cycle and the U.S. National Preparedness System. The planning methodology is represented by the ACT planning wheel. The wheel represents stages for planning that include assessment, planning, checking the plan, preparing for plan implementation, and then testing the plan itself. Pupils of management science will recognize this as, once again, Deming's PDCA quality control cycle. And these five steps that I've talked about will guide the process for developing planning assumptions, writing an emergency operations plan, performing a gap analysis between those assumptions in the plan and creating a preparedness plan that will fill those gaps, and then a process for testing the emergency operations plan itself. This table represents a logical framework that, for the ADEPT planning system. It details the specific activities involved as the outputs, which include a list of planning assumptions, an emergency operations plan, a gap analysis report, a preparedness plan, and quality control measures that include charts and corrective action plans. So we discussed the method for ADEPT planning. Now we'll talk about the format. The format for ADEPT style planning is basically the use of a relational database that can be searched and sorted and queried for planning information. This database is created using a standardized data structure that I refer to as SOAR, S-O-A-R-R. The data schema, in other words, the map of the data structure is developed in hierarchical for, excuse, easy for me to say, right, in a hierarchical format that allows for a hierarchy of hypotheses and cascading objectives, and we'll talk more about that. The structure also allows for decision-making trees to be applied to many actions of the plan itself. So most of us involved in emergency management are already aware of the different levels of planning, Strategic plans are very broad in scope and tactical plans are more detailed and operational plans serve sort of in the middle and serve to connect and combine the two others. The SOAR format is designed for breaking down the content of information that is included in an emergency operation plan or, or any plan actually. <clears throat> we first identify the capability for our particular jurisdiction. Some health-related examples of capabilities include water, sanitation, food, shelter, and healthcare. 
The next step is to identify those strategic goals that are related to our capabilities so that they address those consequences of the disaster. For each strategic goal, we then identify a separate set of operational objectives that will accomplish that particular goal. And we then identify those individual activities that will accomplish each operational objective. And for each activity, in turn, we then assign responsibility for completion as well as resources for that accomplishment. This format, S-O-A-R-R, -R, allows us to specify many aspects of the essential elements of information that are also necessary for the effective emergency operation planner. We typically represent this cascading set of objectives as the SOAR format. This format not only allows us to connect goals at the top with activities, but also allows us to align national strategy at the very top with local resources at the very bottom. The ADEPT planning system uses this cascading format to create tables and charts. SOAR stands for Strategic Goals, Operational Objectives, Activities, Responsible Parties, and Resources. The SOAR format ensures that the elements of information included in the plan are complete. By using the SOAR format, we answer the following key questions about our emergency operations. Why are we doing it? What are we doing? How, where, and when do we do it? Who will do it? And with what resources will they do it? Here's an example of the template used to write for one strategic goal. Objectives are listed that will accomplish the goal, and then in turn, Activities are identified that will accomplish each objective. Resources are then listed that will accomplish each activity. Here's an example of an ADEPT style plan represented in table format. And it could just as easily be entered into a database and searched according to each one of these boxes and using each one of the categories in the top row. In this example, the capability that we are addressing is that of water, sanitation, hygiene, otherwise known as WASH. You can see this capability listed in the far left column. The SOAR format is then represented by the following five columns. Our strategic goal is as follows. An adequate supply of clean water is accessible to all people. Then there are three operational objectives that will accomplish each strategic goal. And there are a series of activities that will accomplish each one of these operational objectives. Finally, responsible parties and resources are ident identified and assigned to every individual activity. And these resources may be directed in additional columns added to the far right. I've used this planning matrix all over the world and it appears to be easily understood regardless of the culture or level of development. No matter where we are in the world, we appear to recognize how to put this information into boxes. This slide depicts how different users of the source format may have access to the information that they require. So for example, leaders typically work in strategy and communications and they require knowledge of the big picture and main objectives of the operation. In comparison, disaster responders, whether in the field or working in the command posts, often find themselves more involved with the implementation and resourcing of individual activities. The hierarchical data schema used in ADEPT allows for each of these groups to easily access the essential information that they need to perform their own tasks effectively. Just by using a relational database, EOP functionality is enhanced to include search, filtering, sorting, and query of information, as well as measuring indicators, performance, or outcome. And the electronic version of the plan also allows us to update discrete plan elements in order to address previously unforeseen circumstances. 
And finally, the electronic format allows us to integrate emergency operation plans with other online applications that will further enhance its functionality, for example, like GPS and so on. Use of this hierarchical format also allows us to identify and define the process of the activity itself. It's important because once identified, this activity may then be used as the starting point for integration into multiple other systems, including this example of integration of ADEPT with the US uh, FEMA preparedness cycle. And the standardization of the ADEPT format also allows for integration with nearly every model for quality control, including Six Sigma. Here's an example of how the SOAR format defines the process and then integrates at the level of the activity, specifically at the activity level, with widely used Six Sigma process for quality improvement. So now let's talk a little bit about the platform. To date, ADEPT plans have been used on the following platforms, paper, computer, and online. Word documents with and without hyperlinks, hyperlinked Excel documents, access database with user interface, and also SQL server database with web interface. The Florida Department of Health actually utilized ADEPT to create a simple XML-based program that represented their plan in a SOAR format. Florida had the problem of generating many multiple hazard-specific plans that were not well integrated. They then used ADEPT to integrate 27 different plans into one comprehensive plan. After Hurricane Katrina, there was a failure in the screening for metabolic deficiencies among newborns in New Orleans, and this prompted Congress to mandate the development of a newborn screening contingency plan, and this task was assigned to CDC on a relatively short uh, fuse. CDC then used ADEPT to rapidly develop a detailed consensus-based plan among the various stakeholders, including academia, parent activists, as well as public health officials and FEMA. That plan is now part of the National Response Framework. More recently, ADEPT was used to write protection plans for hurricanes following Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. And this study is important to note because it's measured not only the effectiveness and efficiency of planning itself, but it also measured the usability of plans in terms of community satisfaction and a perceived freedom from risk among community members. The ADEPT system has been used and applied in over 200 real world applications in 14 nations, including the United States, China, and multiple countries in the Pacific, the Caribbean, as well as Africa. And this has included partnerships with organizations such as WHO and US's HHS and the Department of Defense. In addition to these applications over the years, we've had a great opportunity to study the application of ADEPT in settings all over the world. The articles identified in this slide include publications from US states and Puerto Rico, as well as Africa and China. I know you may be thinking, uh, that's great, Doc, but how do you actually plan? How do you really do it? How does the rubber meet the rubber? So let's take a deeper dive into that ACT planning wheel. As I mentioned, ADEP uses the ACT planning wheel. It has five phases to assess, plan, check, prepare, and test. So let's take a closer look at the process of writing an emergency operations plan, or EOP. Planning is a complex task. It's performed by a group of individuals, usually for an important purpose. The first step in developing an EOP is planning to plan. Developing a plan for how the disaster planning project itself will be used. 
and you can actually use the SOAR format to organize the plan itself. As I mentioned earlier, our planning methodology is represented by this ACT planning wheel. Let's talk about writing an emergency operation plan. We can create an EOP in basically two steps. Number one, SO. We draft those strategic goals and the operational objectives. And number two, ARR. Identify the activities and responsible parties and assign those resources. The choice of mission area determines which capabilities are used in the project plan. In this case, we're writing a response plan, in other words, an emergency operations plan or EOP. One strategic goal of this project plan could be a public health EOP is available to guide multi-sectoral emergency response operations. Previous studies of the SOAR format have revealed a few things for us. State and national level EOPs typically contain about 10 to 30 strategic goals. Each strategic goal is typically comprised of about three to five operational objectives that accomplish that one strategic goal. Operational objectives then should contain about no more than 10 activities. If there are more offered, consider splitting them up and putting the operational objectives into two columns instead of one. Each activity has one responsible party assigned for ensuring and reporting its completion to the incident command system. There is only one primary responsible party, but there can be multiple secondary responsible parties serving to support the primary's role. Resources are then identified and assigned for each activities according to these different partners. In many cases, the strategic goals operational objectives, and even many activities can be drafted in advance by an experienced public health planner or an incident manager. And this is prior to convening any of the stakeholders. This saves a lot of time and is really a very efficient use of people's planning abilities. During prior studies of the planning process, we found that stakeholders do not tend to make significant changes in these pre-drafted strategic goals. Their edits are also usually limited to about 20% of the pre-drafted operational objectives. Stakeholders that are planning during the plan writing process then typically edit about 50% of pre-drafted activities. And then of course, stakeholders edit 100% of responsibilities and resources according to their own needs. Plan writing is usually accomplished in six steps. The facilitator reads the proposed entry aloud then the facilitator asks if this entry is applicable, and if not, it's just simply deleted. If it's applicable, then the facilitator asks if it's stated correctly. And the facilitator then moderates any group discussion that may occur about that entry. They also monitor group editing of the wording itself of the entry, and then reads the final entry together with the group. These are the same six steps that we use to write plans all over the world and in Puerto Rico, actually, in both English and in Spanish last year. These six steps are repeated for each empty box in the SOAR table below. Entries are always reviewed and edited in order and line by line, top to bottom, beginning with a strategic goal, and then left to right, beginning with each strategic goal. Previous studies of the ADEPT SOAR format revealed that stakeholders are able to plan at rates averaging 15 objectives per hour and about 30 activities per hour. Several communities have actually written 60-page emergency operation plans in less than 15 hours. Now, those of you in the, in the audience out there that are planners know, 60-page EOP in less than 15 hours among 23 different organizations and the general community, and with a high degree of participant satisfaction during that process. So let's take a short break now for Q&A, and then I'll return to talk more about monitoring and evaluating disaster plans. <music> 